Hello everyone and welcome to the third lecture in the series Zero to Hero with Python. In this video, I will be telling you about functions in Python. So from my previous two videos, you would already have been exposed to the functions print and input. But we can also write our own custom functions, which do whatever we ask it to do. And functions are like mini programs within a program, like program within a program. Here I have a simple program which is a demo about functions in python i'll show it to you in atom okay so i have created a function by writing def which is the keyword you have to write whenever you want to create a function def stands for define def space then the name of the function and then open and close parenthesis and finally comma and then inside this function after indenting you can write however many statements you want to write detailing what the program what the function sorry has to accomplish okay let's run this so as you can see i got hello howdy and hello again as output three times once twice and third time okay so coming back to the slides had we done the same without functions we would have had to explicitly write the same things three times and that obviously <laughs> is not the ideal practice. Why functions? Well, software programming has in general a principle called DRY, which stands for don't repeat yourself. This is a very useful principle because if you ever decide to update the code, if for example, you wanted to, instead of saying hello, you wanted to say what's up, then you would have had to change hello to what's up three times. And if you had made a function, you can simply change here from here. Hello again to WhatsApp. And that would obviously take less effort. So now I'll show you a function which takes a parameter as input. Okay, so here I have made a function again called hello. And this takes as input a parameter called name and it prints output hello comma then the name whatever the user supplies. Okay, let's see it in action. Okay, so since I had given it Steve and Jobs as the input two times, Steve, Jobs, I got as output, hello, Steve, and hello, Jobs. Okay, now coming back to our presentation. Okay, another thing to keep in mind is that the values which is stored in the parameter is forgotten when the function exits or returns. So for example, here the value stored in the parameter name will be forgotten when the function returns, exits. In general, the value that a function call evaluates to is what is returned and is also called as the return value of the function. This is not strictly necessary, but is usually the case. And the contents of the return statement are obviously the return keyword and whatever the value or the expression that you want to return or the function should return. Okay. A thing to keep in mind is that Python by default, when you issue the print command, it prints whatever you ask it to print and then it outputs a new line by default. But you can change this behavior if you specify an argument to the end keyword. See so if you write hello comma and then that's that's all then print will, python will output hello and then it will change and change to a new line but if you write print hello comma end and then a blank string it will output hello comma but it won't change to a new line so if you want to continue the output that's a good way in which you don't have to change the line but your output will continue also when you give multiple arguments through this print command it will print all those with the, with the space in between. But if you wanted to change that space to something you yourself, you can you can specify the sep keyword. Sep equals to, and in quotes, you can write whatever you want, it, want the separator to be. So here cats, dogs, and mice will be separated by a comma and not a space. Okay, so coming to the concept of scope. What is scope? Well, parameters and variables that are assigned or declared within a function are said to exist only in that function's local scope. They won't exist outside of that. On the other hand, variables that are assigned outside the functions exist in the global scope 
and they can be accessed by whichever function. So why do scopes matter exactly? Well, like I said before, code in the global scope, code in the global scope can't use any local variables because anything with the local scope is only restricted to that function. However, any function can access a variable which has global scope. But code in functions cannot use variables which are assigned in any other function's local scope. Also, a uh, consequence of this scope, local scope, is that you can use the same, you can use a variable which has the same name across different scopes. So for example, you might have three functions, all of which create a variable called temp. There you can be, so for example, I've written an example here, a local variable can be called spam and the global variable can also be called spam because once it, it enters a function, the variable scope changes to local and when it exits, it changes back to global. Okay, so here I have made a small program which when you run gives an error. It gives you a name error. So let's see this. Okay, here is the program. Inside here I've got a function declaration which initializes the value of the variable x to 31337. Then I'm calling that function and I'm just printing the value of x. Had I not known about the concept of scope, I would have guessed that the variable x would exist here also. But apparently it doesn't. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, indeed, I got a name error. It says the name x is not defined. It should write it's not defined in the global scope, but okay, we know what it means. Coming back to the slide, here I've defined a function, defined a program, which demonstrates a concept of local scope. Let's see. Okay, inside here I've got two function declarations, spam and bacon. And I'm calling the spam function from the global scope. Okay, when I call the spam function, a variable called eggs gets initialized to the value 99. Then this bacon function is called, inside of which, a different variable, a variable called x, but with a local scope gets the value zero. And then I exit out, the, out of that function and I print the value of the variable x. Now had I not, again, not known about the way concept of scope, I would have guessed that it would print zero, but that's not the case as you will soon see. See it prints 99 and that is because the scope of the variable x with the value 99 was a level deeper than the scope of the variable x with the value zero. Okay, so sorry. Now let's talk about global scope. Uh, something is given a global scope when it's applicable or accessible anywhere inside your program. Let's see. Okay, here I'm declaring a function called spam which just prints the value of the variable x. I am not declaring the variable x here. Outside the function, inside the main program, I am declaring a function called x and giving it the value 42. Then I am calling the function spam and I am finally just printing the value of x. Now let's see if it runs or not. Okay, yeah, it ran and it gave me the same value as output twice. That is because when the spam function was called the x variable or had the value 42, which it printed. Then it exited and again, since the since there was no change made to the value of this variable, print x on line number six, again returned 42. Okay. So what if we have global and local variables all of the same name? Like I told you before, we can have the variable spam, which has different values in different functions. Here we are having the value x instead of spam. Okay, let's see. Here I've made the file, which starts in the global scope with a variable called x with a value of global. Then the function bacon gets called, inside of which the value of x gets changed to bacon local. It's then printed out and then function spam is called. Inside the spam function, the value of the variable x gets changed again to spam local and it gets printed. Finally, this function exits, 
comes back to bacon the variable value of x is printed this function also exits and finally i am getting the output of the variable x in the global scope okay let's run this and see whether i was correct yes i was correct <laughs> because first output is bacon local and that was because when the log function bacon was called the value of x was changed to bacon local which was printed then the function spam is called and yes we can see that the second output we get is spam local because inside of spam the value of the variable x is again changed to spam local which is obviously printed out and then this function exits and we come back to this bacon function and print x is again issued and yes we see bacon local is again output because in the bacon function the scope of the variable x and it has the value bacon local then finally it also exits out of the bacon function and finally when we print the value of x here in the global scope x has a value global and that's what we see okay. the final output is the line global okay so coming back the global statement so this is used if you want to modify it let's say you might want to modify some variable which was global inside a function when you would normally change a value inside a function since it only has local scope that change vanishes when that function exists but if you use the global statement it won't okay so in this program i show it to you yeah in this program i defined a function called spam which in its first line imports the value the global value of x of the variable x and changes the same to the value spam inside in the global scope a variable called x is declared with the value global spam is called and then print x is issued okay let's see it should output either global or spam let's see which one it outputs okay it has output spam and that was because of this global statement had i not written it here it would simply have output at global but since i mentioned the global statement it out output it spam okay coming back now let's talk about exception handling if you have a program like this in which you have a function called spam which returns 42 divided by the parameter and you call this function four times spam to spam with a argument two spam with argument 12 and spam with spam with argument 0 and 1 so what you expect it to do is to spam spam with argument 2 is called it would return you 42 divided by 2 which is 21 spam divided by 12 would you spam with argument 12 sorry would give you 2.5 because 42 divided by 12 is 2.5 3.5 sorry <laughs> but spam with output 0 it would give you zero division error because a number divided by zero is not a valid mathematical operation let's see the same i have written the same program over here let's run this okay yes indeed we got we got 21.0 3.5 and a zero division error as output which was because of this spam zero call okay now if you wanted to rectify this we would have to use the try and accept block so this block is also very useful so inside of the spam declaration i have on the first line started the try and accept block declaration the first line i am doing try colon return 42 divide by inside the try block you write whatever you intended to do and then in the outside i am writing except zero division error colon so what the this would do what this line would do is that if if doing what you wrote in try you encountered a zero division error it would come it would exit out of the try block and come to the except block and here it would print invalid argument now i am again calling the spam arg function four times with the same arguments as before i have written this function here so I, let's see what happens when i run this okay interesting in this the 
first output is 21 because 42 divided by 2 and 42 divided by 6 by 12 sorry 3.5 then here where it should have given me a 0 division by 0 error it gives me a simple outputs and error invalid argument and then I'm getting none and 42 okay that was great now we have a short program this is the last program of this lecture okay this is a comparatively big program so i'll show it to you on atom okay this program starts with a line called import random this line does what this line does is that it imports the module at random into your program now you have all the functions which were initialized in the random package available to you next we have declared a variable called secret number and given it the value random value of a random integer between 1 and 20. next you output print i'm thinking of a number between 1 and 20. then a for loop starts for guesses taken in the range 1 to 7 so you are guessing six times you print out take a guess and then you ask the user for an input which you convert to an integer then you say if guess was less than the number you had thought of before you say your guess is too low otherwise it's too high and this third case is when the guess is equal to the secret number when and then you can break out of the loop so if your guess was equal to the secret number you print out good job your guess number and then you tell him the number of tries he or she took otherwise you can simply tell him that no you were not able to guess okay let's run this sorry <laughs> i had an extra comma somewhere double quote sorry your guess is too low okay <laughs> yeah okay which number should i pick let's pick seven seven is the lucky number apparently oh shit it's too low i should aim higher let's go for 10. it's too high okay it's either eight or nine eight oh lol <laughs> It was the correct number, I guessed it. But you see, in this method, in this way, I can go over the numbers, I can guess six numbers, and this program will tell me whether I was right or wrong. Okay, so that's all I had for you in this lecture. I will see you in the next one. I have an assignment for you in this lecture. I want you to make a program which will ask the user for three inputs and these three inputs you for you make a function which asks the user for three inputs and stores those input in a list it would then return the list in your global scope you can then iterate through the list and tell the user if the number he or she input was odd or even since the user input three three numbers so you'll have to tell him him or her <laughs> the three numbers whether they were even or odd okay so i'll meet you in the next lecture bye